Hello, everyone. My name is Karl-Hans Mobes. Um, I'm trying to tell you something about JNUNI Jupyter Platform unit testing. I'm doing very basic stuff based on the time because we are really limited. Uh, we would like to make a real talk about that. We could two, take two, three, four hours or more, even, even more. Um, just about uh, something about me. I'm working as a German freelancer, working with Java and all that fancy or not so fancy stuff. Uh, I'm always also a part of the Apache Maven PMC. I'm an Apache Software Foundation member, as you already heard by Christian. So we are working a little bit together on some, some parts of that. What I would like to do is uh, show you some code. I don't want to make much slides here. I just wanted to show you some code. Start that way. So I'm sitting down then. That's the reason why I'm sitting in here in front of the keyboard, the keyboard, the keyboard that you can uh, see what I'm trying to do and show your real code. So where we begin is a very simple, simple class. Uh, don't blame me about the code quality or something like that. That is simply just a class to show some identities or how to do some unit testing. Uh, I think you can implement that better than I do, but it's just a kind of a presentation for code. So we have a simple static members here, very simple thing. And we think about uh, think, uh, things like JUnit4 to write our unit test. And I would like to show some differences between JUnit4, for example, and maybe some information about test and G in comparison to uh, JUnit5 platform, for example. So let us start with a very simple uh, use case and write some unit tests here in a simple way based on JUnit4. You see I have some examples here. Uh, we will start with this one here. Very simple things. Uh, we wrote a, a simple test class. Of course, we have to make it public, things like that. We have to name some, somehow the methods, of course. We need to write down the code. What I'm using here into, uh, for assertion is not uh, the basic, which is provided by JUnit 5 platform. I'm using here the SJ library. But we'll come uh, to these data, the details are coming later a little bit. Uh, then you see some test code here, of course, and just writing some, some test methods here. All of them are, of course, annotated with the test annotation, like the usual case here is done in, in JUnit4. Uh, what you see is uh, that, we, uh, that I have implemented in, with this some intention that I have a method which is called require greater than zero, where I have two implementations of, one for integers, one for longs. Okay, you can do that different, I know, but that was intentional here somehow. So you see the different things here. And one thing I have to do here in JUnit4 is to name the methods in different and make them have a different name, because otherwise they clash simply. I'm really doing technically the same. You can see that very easily. Um, if I do that that way here, then you see one with a prefix int for, for the integer part and one without for the long part, of course. So if you really do that in JUnit4, uh, it comes a little, little bit clumsy over the time if you write so somehow some, some kind of that test. Uh, that's a little bit weird. Why do you need that? Um, you can, of course, rename the methods in another way or whatever, but in the end it doesn't help because you're naming the methods based on an intention that they are overloaded, the parameters, of course. So might be not the best case here. So let's go to how to use that or how can you write that in JUnit 5 platform, for example. I started here with a li little bit of parts here. Just make a before all and a before. I will come later to that. Just print out some information. It's not very useful at the moment, of course. I hope you uh, will not blame me for that. It's just to show what is possible here. So the first part is to do that simple and translate to the JUnit 5 platform. And there are some capabilities which are also supported by JUnit 5 uh, that are mark remarkable in this case. What you see here is the difference that all the public uh, modifiers have been re removed. It is only necessary to have a clause in a package default or package private. I don't know what you prefer in that case. So I can remove the public from the class. I can remove the public from the methods as well. But in the end, the only change here in the, in the end is to remove that and add the annotation of the JUnit platform, of course. That works perfectly. Um, but at the end here, you are coming to the point, as I said, you have duplicated methods name and things like that. That looks a little bit strange. <laughs> so there must be a solution for that, to, to do that in a better way, of course. 
And of course, ne ni nicely, the, the JUnit 5 platform supports exactly that, that you can do that and handle that in a correct way. It, it's much more easier to handle and to better, uh, get better understanding tests. Let us take a look. What you can do is introduce so-called nested classes. That means you can make a separate class in your test class. You have to mark it with the nested annotation. And then you can name the class however you like. And indirectly, then you have a kind of categorization or a naming schema uh, and drill that down for your classes. And what you have, and, and if you take a look on the, on the structure of that, then you see something like that. Then you have a real test class on the, on the first level, on the root level, which is named here preconditioned class. And the, on the second level, you have required then zero long. Maybe I should think about my naming. Uh, that could be better, of course. And another one required then zero for integers, of course. So you now you have solved the problem that you need to rename the method names. I can exactly uh, name them exactly the same. And I have exactly a, re a reference between the different classes for integers, for longs, and so on. That's one of, one of the nice things. I can also run them, of course, in, from your IDE, of course, as usual. That works for IntelliJ, that works for Eclipse, for NetBeans, and all that, that stuff as well. So as you see, you have a construction here. Create, it's created in a tree based on the things you are executing which is also possible that I say, OK, I wanted to run only the test for the ints or for the longs, or just, just, just doing that as an example here, just running them here. I can limit that. Of course, you can run a single test. Of course, that's not a problem. Uh, but you see they have a, a categorization and a grouping of your tests, which is very good to have such easy, easy separations of different tests. That makes it more, more easier. Um, let us take a look. And one of the things is coming up, as I said, based on the naming uh, what you have, is that you name your classes in a good way. What you can do is, of course, if I would like to, uh, let me take a look here. And uh, you say, OK, require then zero is not a very good descriptive name. You can, of course, rename the classes with your IDE. It's not a problem. Uh, then you come to the point uh, you would like to make it more descriptive. Uh, not a name in a class somehow described what you are trying to express in your tests. And then there is a coming an interesting thing which has been introduced to JUnit 5 platform is so-called a so-called display name. That means you can give a, a description for what is shown on the output. So you can do that on the root class, of course, and give a different name what you like. I just have used here very short things. You can write, of course, um, a poem if you like. Might be not that useful, but it's possible. Um, and then you can do that also, also on the different um, nested classes as well, make a, a categorization. And it's also possible to do that on the test method. So what you will get then in the end is something like that you can get a complete different look on, on, the, on your test structure here. If you do that with a precondition and thinking a little bit about that, then you can construct here very good sentences. If you do that in the correct way, just playing around with that, then you can construct here real sentences and describe what you are doing here. For example, if you read that, that works very good here. That's not perfect, of course, just to show you the direction where you can go. If you do that more, more and more often, the more familiar that, that, that becomes, and it's more easier to understand what you're exactly doing. Um, so you can read here, precondition for inter integers require greater than zero should return the same object, for example. And then you can do something like that. That's an easy way to uh, make your tests create more a story. Sometimes you call that maybe behavior-driven development, which you can do a little bit in that direction. This is, of course, not a behavior-driven development framework, but it can help to get, get into this direction and make it more descriptive, for, of course. Um, sometimes you have the problem uh, if you want to have uh, different names based on the class names or on the method names, of course. Uh, it is possible to define uh, 
uh, a display generator. You can use the built-in ones, or you can write completely your own. Then you can say, if I separate the methods, for example, as I did here, with an, and separate with an underscore or something, then these classes or results will be printed out without the underscores, and I see more or less exactly that, that uh, sentence of this. That's also possible. There are some predefined, you can implement it however you like. Uh, what is also possible in some tests, it is sometimes necessary to make a, 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 a condition to run that test, for example, on different platforms. For example, I want, don't want to run this test here on a macOS, for example, or on a Linux, or on a Windows box, or something like that. That's very easy to express with um, JUnified platform. Then you can say, I just wanted to disable this on macOS. That means it will not run on, on macOS, but it will run on all other platforms. It's very easy to express. There are several others. I just wanted to know, give you, you mentioned them. Um, I have uh, done that on here. You can disable on a particular JDK. The start is JDK 8, because JUnit platform itself starts with JDK. So below it's not, will not work, of course. What you can do also is to enable that. Exactly the opposite. Uh, you can enable the tests like this. So, so uh, I would like to run this test only on JDK 8 or just run them on Linux. What you can also very easily create is so a meta annotation that can be combined and make your tests more readable. I can combine that for my own. So I have created a very simple annotation here just for demonstration purposes where I say test on Linux. That's not, nothing else than the combination of the test and enabled on operation system. Uh, annotation. That's very easy. You can do much more complex things if you like, but we're scratching here only the surface, of course. Um, things like before and things like that, as you've seen in the JUnit 4 part, uh, you can do that, of course, as well. So it's not a problem to define them all. They have been named a little bit different. I think it's more clear now. Before all means really before all, all tests. Before each means really before each test and after each, and so on. That you can do. What you can combine, of course, is I have defined them here on the, on the level of the uh, surrounding class. And now I can do that on the nested classes as well. So I can combine that with disabled and th things like that. So I can completely make it very easy to make con different configurations. Uh, what is also possible to make uh, an order, execution by order, there are some in JUnit 4 where you can define by the method order, alphabetic, things like that. In JUnit 5 platform, you have the opportunity to define the order by an order annotation or alphabetic sorting and things like that. Then you can define the order by yourself uh, and combine them, of, of course. Just randomly, randomly in there. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Or you can define, of course, uh, if you would like to have a random order all the time, you can define that on your own, if you like. Then this makes sure that everyone is running a different order of your test. That keeps uh, your state from that. What is also possible to do some parameterized test. Uh, it's a little bit tricky, or it's more a different thing. You can define a method, uh, your, your test method, given an argument and define a so-called method solve. If it's not defined, it will automatically get the name you d as the name of the test method. You can de define it explicitly, uh, give a stream of arguments, which is put into the argument list, and run them all that. And it's easy to understand that, because if you do that, then you see all the solution of the arguments is also displayed. You can run, and uh, it will jump to the right correct, correct level, you can run that simple te single test with exactly that parameter set. That's extremely helpful in particular. Um, let us take a look into um, parameterized test. Yes. Um, yeah, I know. It's very limited, I know. Um, I've done that very, very small uh, calculator test, you can do things like CSV sources. You can define a parameterized test where you need to add a supplemental dependency, which is called JUnit Jupyter param, if I correctly remember. Then you can 
define the string which is used to form it, uh, your output of how it looks like in the output for the display, like this. So you see what I've defined here. If I would like to do that in a more different way, like this, then I can do that as well. If you would like to rerun that, then you see, of course, I can change that, that text. You have some placeholders here, which exactly uh, represent the parameters of, of your test and so on. And then you can create that and make that very descriptive. Um, what you can do, that, which is very interesting, is you can interf test interfaces. An interface, since Java 8, can contain code, a default method, something like that. And I've written a very useless function, of course, uh, just the default method. But you can test that very easily. You can just say on the test, just implement that interface, and I can just run that test and call that method. So you can call that very easily, and you can call uh, static methods or uh, default methods on an interface. It's very easy. Dynamic tests. I will go only to the surface here because it's very complex. Uh, usually you write your test, implement that during the build time. You describe what you are exacting going through the steps. But with dynamic tests, it's possibly to define what is really tested at runtime. So you can think about that. I have a large number of classes uh, that have a marker interface. I would like to write some special test, for example, an equals method, something, some, as an example. But I don't want to write 500 tests by hand or something. OK, parameterize would work, but it's limited. So you can make that dynamic and run and create the test dynamically, completely. That means it is possible to write, not to write the test itself, you can write what the test here is, and that, that will describe what the test does. It is, in, in the end, not limited. You can make a lambda function or completely call a method or whatever is possible. So you can do, to be honest, really fancy stuff. And it's very interesting to, to have a power in that. Um, what is also interesting to have a called an extension. Everything in, in, in uh, JUnit Jupyter is based on extension, more or less. Of their own, they are using their own. Their own. Uh, the, the extendable of JUnit 4 test and G is very limited. There are some, some rules like that or something like that. You can, there's a limited to before and after or something like that. But in JUnit 5, you have the opportunity to really do that in a very interesting stuff. Um, i just skip some code here. Um, you have so many uh, extension points that it's possible to extend your make right extensions to support you. And I have made a very, very simple one here, just a very simple one here, um, which is something like I would like to have a so-called a timing extension. I s simply stole in that from the documentation, uh, which is a very simple example. I would like to uh, see how long my tests are running. Just a very simple thing. Um, you can do that with uh, defining that here with extend with something like that. Then you impl implement that class. Uh, that Sorry, that's of course not uh, right. Go into that. And this, this is the whole extension. What you do is you have an interface, what you're calling, implement the extension point, and you can do what you want. There's internally uh, a, a hash map which is supporting you to store parameters which it can be holding between different steps of your things and then you can implement such things that makes it very easy to uh, implement things uh, what you like to do and just to see that here I just click on that then you see took 22, 62 milliseconds or something you can imagine I've written uh, things like with an end-to-end -end test and some, something like that and that can be combined into your own uh, Annotation, it's very easy to do that. And then you can combine that and make an, your own annotation and write that and use that, which combines these different things here and makes it much more easier. And then you can simply uh, replace your extend with here with timing, yeah, time. Uh, I need to write it the correct way. So I can do that and I have run that. I can do that. It's a very easy thing. I've written in the meantime several extensions, which it makes it very easy to do stuff, which is with uh, JUnit 4, Test and G, very complex and very hard to handle. Yeah, I know. 
exactly. Just wanted to show a simple example, which is a little bit bigger. I've written an extension for Maven, of course I'm working as a Maven developer, and I would like to make my experience about uh, integration tests better. And that was a hard part, and I've written a JUnit Jupyter extension to handle that, and all the stuff which is in there, and I can express the tests in my IDE, IDE and run them, and run stuff behind in the behind, I can start my Maven and make a local cache and all that stuff is possible and that makes it possible to handle things like that. Or Spring Boot Max does the same way, there is an extension, if you write Spring Boot test with JUnit Jupyter, it's not, nothing else than an extension, it's an extend with if you take a look into the annotation. So based on the time, that's it. I have some links here, we'll put it online. I can give you only a rough overview of the, the possibilities. We are not limited to that. I have just ignored many, many, many details because there are so many things. Um, I hope you have some, some time to look at and I can strongly recommend to do that because it makes testing really easier. Thanks. <laughs> if some question, maybe have a minute or two for some questions. Yes, you can use the, 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 the display name, for example, mm -hmm. if you like. Uh, and the, the parameter test has also an annotation where you can dis write a description, yeah? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, you can access the parameters. yeah exactly. Yeah, exactly. That's possible, yeah? Yeah, so it's, it's for remark. Um, um, I use uh, as a parameterized things with lambda. And That's possible, too, yes. Yes, but when you do a two-string on the lambda, yeah, not yeah, then we have to give it back to you and maybe Python for lambda. Yeah. yeah, but yeah, uh, it, um, currently you have two forms of lambda. You have the yeah. serialized lambda, and for serialized lambda you have more information, yeah. but to unit doesn't use yeah. the Yeah, correct. So pull request? <laughs> yeah, pull request. <laughs> okay, okay uh, yeah. is uh, IntelliJ smart enough to help you with uh, the display names when you refactor names of functions? Uh, no, it does not. No. So why would you use them? I, I don't understand. I'm sorry? So why would you use them? You, you, you're stuck with remembering that you need to change these names? Um, because it describes more the intention of my test. Is that what you use function names for? Uh, the problem is you can't write spaces uh, or something like that. And it's limited based on the naming, naming schema of, of Java, of course. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you would like to write more information or just write, it, write a sentence with a comma or something like that. That's not possible in, in a method name. And it helps a lot to describe, of course, we can just, it's a matter of personal taste, of course. Yes, fine. And you can include parameters. <laughs> uh, rules, I mean, stuff like that, are they still working in uh, GUnit 5? Uh, if you run that with the Vintage Engine, they will run, but they are running not with JUnit Jupyter, they run real with JUnit 4 under the hood. So how do they do rules with the things you just went through? Or I'm actually looking at the rules for class. So I'm having setting up an environment and keep it running through all the whole test suite. Uh, yeah, you can use before, things yeah. like that. But that will close down the test after the, the class is done, right? Yeah, you have different befores, all before each, things like that. And oh, reference counting. Yeah, reference counting, things like that. And uh, if you need to really do that, I would sort of take a look what exactly kind of rules you're using. Uh, most of the time I've used with exce exception things like that, that's not necessary anymore. Or test containers, there is an extension as well. As it's very easy to write your own extension if you really needed it. The migration is very easy. Ah, okay. There's an annotation for it. You can um, swap the life cycle yep. to class based or method based. Method based, yeah. Uh, well, I'm actually looking for the sweep based. Uh, so, sweep would run with one, uh, 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 with one environment running. So, I don't have set up tasks for setting up and pulling down. No, that's what you do with an external resource yep. that you can manage whatever in an extension. In extension, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. There was another one? If you use Uh, I'm using Makita most of the time. And there is an extension as well you can use in relationship with JUnit 5 that supports Makita. 
for example, in Spring Boot or something like that. Yeah. It's also an extension in JUnit Jupyter. Yeah. Other questions? Okay. 